What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech. Back with another video of the Smart Home Series. This is episode seven. The last video, you, I mentioned that Dome hooked us up. We've got all kinds of Dome products here. We've got open closed sensors. We had energy monitoring sensors, outlets in the last video. We've got the water main controller, smart mousetrap, and some leak sensors. In this video, we're going to be taking care of the leak sensors and the water main controller. We're gonna add these six leak sensors under sinks, appliances, uh, sump pump, water heater, and uh, we're gonna put those there and we're gonna set up an automation to turn off this water main valve if it does sense any moisture. Now we'll also set it up to alert us if there's any kind of leak. We're gonna be using SmartThings in this application and it'll be under the uh, smart home monitoring area. So in that case, it will send us notifications and alert us with any kind of siren that we have. We don't have one set up yet, but the water main valve will turn off also. So let's say you don't have your phone with you, but you go to take a shower, you uh, get some water or something like that. There's not gonna be any water. The valve's gonna be turned off and you're gonna know right away that there's something wrong. So. That's what we're gonna set up today. So let's go ahead and get these leak sensors all unboxed, as well as the water main controller. So if you're new here, you may not have seen that I actually installed one of these in a past video at my house, and it's been working flawlessly ever since. I test it every once in a while just to make sure it's still connected, and it's been solid for the past couple of months. Now what this does, it's pretty simple. This just goes over your valve, and then the motor inside here turns the turns the valve and it closes it. There's uh, some hose clamps included that you install around the pipe next to the water main shutoff and there's a power cord. So we'll get that installed in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and get all of these leak sensors open and paired with smart things. So since I already know what I'm doing, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the directions. Like, uh, like I said in the past video, we have the sensor itself, this is the brains of the operation. They're, these are all Z-Wave Plus, so you have that reliability and extended range. There are three prongs on the bottom, and what that allows you to do is set this down just as is, and any two of those three prongs that sense that close that contact from water will go ahead and send you that alert, and it actually does have a built-in alarm. Now what also you're able to do is add this extension onto here. It just goes onto those little contact points and you have an extension here that is quite long and you're able to just plug that in here. So if any two of these three small contacts sense water, it will send the signal to this main body and do the same thing. So if you do need to mount this on the wall for any reason, there is a small hole in this extension ring and, you, and it does come with an anchor and a small screw. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and get all of these paired up right here in the centralized location. We, the hub is not far from us. They do recommend being within 10 feet of the hub to get them paired, because they do have a little bit less of a signal range when you do pair them. But after that, you can move them as far away as you want within the Z-Wave Plus range. But we should be okay. If not, we will go ahead and move closer. So the, what, what you do to pair these is uh, just take it off of the plate and go ahead and twist and pull it open. Now there is a little battery tab there, if you can see that, that you pull that and then press the little button in here, the only button in here, three times quickly and it should go ahead and register. So in the SmartThings app, I'm going to hit the little plus sign and while it's looking for a device, I'll go ahead and pull the battery tab and press the button three times. And there it is, dome leak sensor. There's our first one. Now what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do is go ahead and label all of these now, and then I'm gonna rename the name of the device in the app so we can keep everything organized. 
So I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and right inside this little area, I'm gonna put a dishwasher and then I'll just put it back together. I'll put it on here, set this one aside and I will rename the device right away and I'll call it dishwasher. Click done and I'm not gonna save it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these added first. So this next one is going to be for the kitchen sink. Do the same thing again, pull the battery tab, Press the button three times. There we go. KS Kitchen Sink. Rename this Kitchen Sink. So this next one will go probably under the water heater. That seems to be one of the more things to worry about. Popped right up. I'll put uh, water heater. WH and I'll rename this device water heater and the next one we will do the sump pump all right that one took a few seconds longer but it's all right I'll put sump pump in here and here I'll put sump pump, SP. And the last one, we will go ahead and put um, under the washing machine. So we do seem to be having a bit of an issue with this last one. It's not wanting to pair. So I'm gonna go closer to the hub and see if that fixes it. All right, so unfortunately, I was not able to get it paired up even right next to the hub. I tried many different things. I took the battery out, put it back in, pressed the button three times rapidly, a few more times, and it's just not working. My guess is it may have been a return or something, and it's paired with another hub right now. So I do know that Dome has great customer service, so I'm gonna send them a message. Hopefully they can send out another one pretty quick. I'm gonna set this one off to the side, but we do have four of them ready to go. They're all paired up, as you can see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this, and they'll all get added right into our devices. Now, one thing I actually forgot to do was add the custom device handler for these devices. The Dome products all require a custom device handler. It's super easy to do. Go ahead and check out this video on the other Dome video that I did to learn how to go ahead and add that custom device in there. It's really easy. You just need to hop on your computer and go into the SmartThings IDE and copy and paste some things and you're good to go. It's better to do that before you pair them, but it's also doable after you pair them. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. And uh, if you do happen to pick any of these up, by the way, links for everything will be down in the description. Uh, just go ahead and make sure that you add those custom device handlers beforehand for each device that you have. Now, the reason you want those custom device handlers, you may be thinking, well, it's working. It's, it's on here, right? Well, there's not as much information as with the uh, custom device handlers. You actually get the battery life. You actually get a better looking page and a few more other things that you wouldn't be able to do if you just use the built-in device handler. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and add those and I'll be right back. The reason, I'll give you an example of why you wanna install those custom device handlers is it gives you a lot more options. So in the dishwasher, you can see it's now we've got a battery indicator and there's a lot of settings you can change. So you can enable and disable an alarm. You can give it an initial alarm duration uh, a reminder alarm, let's say you're not home for a while, it'll keep going. Uh, re reminder interval, total alarm duration, uh, the check-in interval, and the battery reporting interval. None of those options are available under the generic Z-Wave leak detector device handler. So that's another reason why you wanna do that. And it just works better if you use the ones that are designed for the device. So like I said, if you don't know how to do that, you can click the link up here to that video that I do show you how to do that, or the link in the video description to the Dome website where they walk you through it also. So we're also gonna add the uh, water valve real quick. We're gonna add this while we're here, and then we'll go ahead and install it in the basement on the water main shortly. So I do have the custom device handler for the water valve 
installed as well. So all we should have to do is just plug this in and press the button three times on the front in order to get it paired up. I'm gonna plug it in right here. As soon as I plugged it in, it started trying to turn that valve. I'm gonna go to add a thing and press the button three times. All right, there we go. I had to try it a second time, but it popped up. So we're just gonna name this uh, water main shut off. Click done and we'll save. Let's just make sure we are able to control this. All right, seems to be working well. So now we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, the few automations with the uh, smart home monitor. Now all of these leak sensors will be added in that, so in case any of them sense a leak, it will alert us, but we're also gonna set it up with the water main shutoff. So real quick, we'll just go into the SmartThings homepage and uh, it's gonna want us to configure this, blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna do leaks. Use every moisture sensor we have. We're gonna set it for push notification. We don't have um, any audio devices or a siren right now, so we're gonna leave that alone. You can also set up a camera to capture if you want. But what we're gonna do here at the bottom is close valve. So we're gonna select valve and water main shut off. Click done, save. Save. And we're good to go. So we can see that in the smart home monitor, everything is okay. There is no leaks, nothing is sensing water. So let's go ahead and test this real quick and then we'll get everything installed where, they, where they're gonna go. So I'll grab this one here, the uh, dishwasher. Since it will have the extension on it to be able to fit underneath the dishwasher all of the way, I'm going to add this extension. You don't need the extension, but I'm going to add it in this case. And I'll put the main uh, part over there and I'll put that part there. So I got a little bit of water here, simulate a leak, and I'll go ahead and hold this. All right, so you can, you can hear the alarm, and this is closing. Also on the app, you can see that Get that out of the water because that's annoying. You can see that we did get a notification. We have our water detected by a dishwasher. Click on that and it says water leak detected. We can view the alert and we can dismiss. Are you sure you want to dismiss this accident? Yes, this was a false alarm. So now we're back to everything's okay. So these seem to be working great. Let's go ahead and get them installed. All right, so we've got the dishwasher here and uh, here is the Make sure I have the right one. Yes, this is the one for the dishwasher. So obviously we need to get underneath there as far in there as possible. And it is on top of the existing hardwood. So there's no step down or anything like that. So I don't think this big one will fit in there. So that's why they give you the extension. What I'm gonna do is set this one inside this cabinet. and it should be able to close just fine with it there, yep. Now I'm just gonna take this extension and feed it underneath as far back as it will go. So everyone's application is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, in most cases, you could probably just pop this front panel off, which can easily be done, and it will probably slide under there just fine. But this works for now. We're gonna see how this works. It's in there about a, a, about a foot into the bottom of it. If there's a significant leak, it will pick it up. So on to the next room. And by other room, of course, I mean the kitchen sink, which is right next to the dishwasher. So we're not gonna need the extension for this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this off. And these three contacts will go ahead and pick up any moisture. So it looks pretty dry right now. I'm just gonna put it in the back of the cabinet. I'm actually gonna move it over to the side a little bit, which is where the 
which is where the P-trap is, that will allow any uh, significant leak from that area to be picked up. Now to the basement. So down at the water heater, we are gonna use the extension for this to be able to fit in a little bit smaller of an area. Now, like I said before, everyone's use case is gonna be a little bit different. But in this particular water heater, there's a little spot in case there is a leak underneath for the water to drain out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place the leak sensor right there. And the main body of it, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just set right on top of here. It shouldn't infringe upon anything. We should be good to go. Uh, we'll tidy this up, all this loose wire. We'll get some zip ties and tie it around that pipe a little bit later. And lastly, the sump pump. We are definitely gonna be using the extension on this one because what we're gonna do is actually dangle it down into the pit. Now you don't wanna use the main unit on this it's because if you do get a bad rainstorm or something and the pit does flood, this can actually short circuit or something like that. Where all this is is a sensor and if it is fully engulfed in water, it's not gonna hurt it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set it down in there. actually hear that it touched the bottom where there is a little bit of water there so every so you're just gonna have to set it um, above where the switch is for the pump not so low that it's constantly going off before the switch for the pump is set it's a good height there so you're just gonna put this plug back on and that should hold that in place nicely and I'll just put the main unit right next to it that works out so here is the water main, uh, the water meter coming into the house. We have a valve there and also a valve there. We're going to go ahead and use that valve because it's got more room for us. So it's really as simple as just hose clamping this to the bottom pipe and this part will take care of the rest. But the main thing you want to make sure you do is that you put the pivot point for the motor on the pivot point of the valve, which is right about there. So I'll go ahead and get this clamped on. All right, so both hose clamps are nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. Now you can actually pull this little ring on the back to manually turn the valve if you want to. So no issues there. Now we just need to plug it in. Now the only issue is we don't have a plug around here. There's one on the other side. I'll just have to grab an extension cord. They will be finishing the basement to an extent in the near future. So there will be a plug placed nearby here. Found an extension cord. Go ahead and plug that in. And as you plug it in, it does go ahead and go through the cycle of turning off the valve. Go ahead and push the button to open it back up. Now that we've got this installed, it should be reconnected to smart things. I'm gonna go into the thing just to make sure it is gonna work. I'll click water main shutoff. There we go. Now we'll open it. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick test uh, just to make sure the automation works okay, what I'm going to do is go to the, uh, the sump pump and I'm going to just drop that thing down a little bit more. I'll leave the camera here so you can see it close as soon as I do that. Alright, so I don't know if you can hear that or not, but the alarm just across the basement is going off because of that. We did receive the notification. We got a dual notification because SmartThings is in the middle of that migration to the new app. But anyway, if we click on that, it does tell us what's going on, water leak detected, and it says that it was in the sump pump. And it tells us that the valve was also closed. So I'm just gonna dismiss it. This is a false alarm, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back up. All right, so there you have it. If there's any leaks throughout the house, the valve will automatically close. They'll get notifications on the phone as well as an audible alarm from the device itself. 
like I said, there's a lot of different settings you can go into with that alarm uh, on the device. You can change a lot of the different things. You can hear it pretty much throughout the house. It's not that loud. It's not designed to be an audible alarm. Dome actually also does offer a siren that can be paired with this system to go off in that case. Now this is one of those things that you hope you never have to run into and these sensors are just going to kind of sit there until an issue comes up. Now the best thing about these is the battery life of the CR123 batteries inside. It should last for a couple of years without any problems and the Z-Wave Plus reliability should keep it connected even if it's far away from the hub like down in the basement and it should give you that peace of mind that everything is taken care of and you don't have to worry about a flood or anything like that. I actually know of someone personally that had a leak under their dishwasher. They didn't know about it until about a month or two later and their floors were completely ruined. They had to redo everything and it cost them thousands of dollars. So just for a couple hundred bucks with this setup, you can uh, rest easy knowing that that shouldn't happen to you. So that's all I have for this one, guys. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any future videos. Make sure the notification bell is rung. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay smart. <music>